Hi, and welcome to Homo Ludens, the channel on history and board games. This video is the third episode of our series to introduce newcomers to war games. The first two videos were about what is a war game and what are different kinds of war games. And this video is going to be dedicated uh, as helping you uh, building the foundation for your war game collection that is going to be big and expensive if you get into it. And to help me provide a different angle to something that is going to be a very personal list which goes those top five lists usually are like super subjective i decided to have a guest and the guest here is brian and should i try to say your last name yes no, no you will tell it <laughs> afterwards uh, and brian is not just my war game buddy because that would be lame but actually he has some uh, some uh, i don't know street credibility something like this <laughs> we could say yes uh, because brian is Legendary designer be behind uh, two GMT games, uh, Nothing Game Bl But Glory and uh, Saints in Armor, yes. both in the Musket and Pike series. Two war games so awesome that I've never played them. <laughs> so it's a really, really <laughs> cool game. And I, 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 I don't feel guilty about it because you never actually wanted to play them with me. We never really had the opportunity, but to be fair, I did play quite a few of your upcoming games for playtesting purposes. Uh, and mostly games that are going to be released uh, by Academy Games. And I'm thinking about mostly two that we spent quite some time on. Uh, the first one is uh, 1618 Tragedy. That would be in the upcoming uh, Burst of Europe series. Uh, and the other game is When Whales Fight, the next game in the Fog of War series uh, on the yes. Korean War that takes the system. So it's a block uh, CDG game. So thank you, Brian, for uh, joining us. Uh, do you have thank anything you, you want to... Yes. <laughs> do you have anything you would like to say before we... Uh, before we start about yourself, something I missed? Or do you think? Um, no, I think you yeah. have everything. Cool, awesome. So as I was saying, the idea of this list is to lay out the good foundation for a good wargaming collection. And the criteria I took was first, um, I wanted uh, games that were not necessarily entry level war games. So don't expect top five war games for beginners. Some of them are definitely not gonna be war, uh, like beginner friendly, but I think that they are manageable even for a beginner. Uh, and what comes in connection with this is the second criteria is I actually picked war games that you can play as a beginner, but that you will continue enjoying while your like journey toward war gaming is going to evolve. So it's games that are going to be good games to keep in your collection going on. Obviously, I'm looking also for good games. I think it's really important <laughs> to, to start your foundation with is having good games. And I also try to focus on games uh, that are of a system or containing mechanics uh, that will learn you about other kind of war games. Uh, so you will see some card driven games. You will see some stuff that are uh, part of the war gaming tradition that I thought were like good examples of them. Regarding the eras, I didn't really look into the different eras because most of the games that I picked, actually you have uh, the system is also covering different eras. So if you want to go for something that you're more interested in, you usually have some choice. And I try to f also uh, focus on games that are available uh, for sale and not having like a game that is completely uh, unviable that wouldn't make a lot of sense. So that was the the, the criteria I took for uh, this list. Did you have the same or slight differences? I had um, mostly the same, but with uh, some differences. All uh, the games I chose were beginner friendly to, mm. uh, to some degree, some yeah. more than others. And uh, as you, I mostly took uh, games in the game series because uh, that's where I'm at right now as a gamer. I focus on game series because it allows me to play more games and focus yeah. less on learning new rules. Which makes actually, yeah, a lot of sense. And I think it's gonna be a theme for, for probably for that list, you'll see. Uh, one caveat, uh, there is a high probability that we're not gonna mention game that you think should be good foundational <laughs> games to start a war game collection. So that's gonna happen, chill. Uh, there are two reasons for this. First of all is, I haven't played, at least myself, I haven't played all war games. And I, <laughs> I don't think you did, but you, you, you probably played more than I did. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I haven't played all war games. And if I think about the top hundred war games on BGG, I only played twenty-five. I don't know if that's a good score or not. But uh, so there is a huge gap that I mm. have in games that I haven't played. And the second uh, reason for not having the war game that you're thinking about right now that we won't mention probably is that it's a top five list and you always have to make trade-offs. So yeah. there are some, you then cannot talk about all the games. And I think we can start uh, with first pick. I yes. have to maybe make it clear that we didn't pick an order uh, of preference. It's just a selection of five, but the first one and the fifth one don't have a hierarchy. So it's just an open list. 
So I will let you start with your uh, first pick. Yes, uh, my first pick is uh, Julius Caesar from uh, Columbia Games um, and the uh, Columbia Games ABC system in general. Julius Caesar is uh, the probably the best introduction game to uh, the ABC system and uh, block war games in uh, general. Uh, the main attraction to block games uh, are the uh, elegant fog of war, uh, as the identity and uh, strength level of the enemy's units are unknown. Uh, if you are a chess type player who desires total control and knowledge of the enemy, uh, block games are not for you. But uh, then again, I would argue that uh, war games in general might not be for you. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's bold first entry. If yes. you don't like this, just don't play board It's games. It's on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, block war games uh, appeal strongly to players uh, wanting to uh, to plan and play based on estimates of enemy strength and capabilities and uh, generally following their gut feeling. The uh, ABC system is uh, card driven, but uh, the cards are mainly used to activate units and there are few event cards. So for this reason, the system is an excellent introduction to card-driven games in general mm. as well. And the combat system is a uh, is bucket of dice, which means you roll one die for each uh, combat strength point you have, but uh, hit based on the quality of the unit doing the fighting. So this is a nice and simple way of uh, doing combat and it makes sense historically, and it just feels great to roll a lot of dice. <laughs> And uh, while the uh, rules of the games on the system are uh, simple, they still manage to uh, elegantly show uh, the uh, the features of warfare in the pre-modern era, as uh, armies uh, campaign during the summer and go into winter quarters uh, when the land can no longer sustain them. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. No, I think it's probably a game that we'll talk about later uh, in that video. But I was thinking about the fact that you mentioned that it's a good intro to CDG. Yes. And for the sake of the video, I will disagree with this. Yes. I think it's not a great intro to CDG because you don't have a choice when you play the card. The card effect is the card effect. And I think what's That's true. at core of the CDG is when you play a card, you actually have to do a trade-off. You have you want to hit the event, you want the ops, or That's eventually true. you want the replacement points. But I, I agree of on all the rest. Uh, on the fact that it's a bit chess-like, so it's accessible, but it's also quite exciting. And, and personally, I like throwing a lot of dice, even if I'm really bad at it. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but yeah, no, it's just the, the CDG part, I think, is... Uh, yeah, you don't really get the feeling of a CDG while playing those games, I would say. And I see your point. Yes, and, but, yeah. and, and, <laughs> and respectfully disagree. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, but that was uh, okay. Good first, uh, good uh, first entry, and as you said, pretty, uh, pretty uh, uh, beginner friendly. My first pick was the command and color system, um, and the one I know best is a one that is not historical, which is actually battle law. But it ac it actually is in a lot of different uh, eras. And the last one that I've tried was with you, and was uh, command and colors ancients which I thought was really amazing and I really love the command and color system. It's not the, my favorite system in any way because I'm not that much fan of tactical games, uh, but I think that this system is, is super interesting and what I what I love about it is that there is the, the simplicity of the of the mechanics. So it's a, it's a light tactical card assisted game where you have to play cards to be able to activate different parts of your army, center, left, right, and then you have specific events. Uh, so it's actually in that way very easy to to grasp most of the information are on the cards and then the combat system is pretty straightforward so depending on the quality of the unit you have more or less success to actually do an impact and what i really like about the um, the common core system is that with the same system applied to a lot of different areas you have a completely different feel but the rules that you've learned for you could it could be heroic fantasy first world war Second World War, Ancients, or Napoleonic, the system is still the same, and you have slight variation in the rules, but you have a completely different feel at the output. And I yes. think for me, is this is a great uh, uh, series to start your collection with, but even to start your uh, your journey as a war gamer, because with a significant but not that big of an investment to learn the rules, you actually have access to a lot of different things, a lot of different feeling. And I would say take any of them. Uh, I don't have uh, preferences. And I would say the preference is probably based on your interest in the era. So that was my first it, pick. It will return. Yes. <laughs> second pick. Yes. And my second pick is the Birth of America or Birth of Europe series from Academy Games. Uh, it's a series of uh, simple and I would say card driven games, but uh, I know now that uh, we disagree. 
uh, games that feature area movement and they can be played by uh, up to five players uh, divided into two teams, whereas uh, most uh, war games are two player affairs. So that's something different. Yeah, and yeah, that's actually quite cool. The yeah. fact that you have the flexibility of if you bring it to uh, to board game night, it's actually a, a good game to get people into war gaming because this flexibility in player count is actually a very good asset, I think, of the it game. Is. And the games are uh, mechanically very simple, but with uh, some small twists that uh, fit their topic. So uh, I would recommend uh, starting with the the topic that interests you the most. And the rules and uh, gameplay uh, of the games uh, might remind players a lot of uh, the classic game uh, Risk, and that makes them excellent intro games to uh, non-war gamers. But when you're playing them, you will find that um, you quickly discover uh, a depth and nuance uh, not present in uh, Risk, and uh, it's included in the games with uh, no extra rules weight or uh, yeah, any trouble at all, just by elegant designing. An example of this is uh, in Risk you roll dice and hit on sixes, and in classic war games you roll dice and result uh, you check the result in tables. Here the dice are the tables, so each kind of unit has mm. their own dice and uh, with different results. So you you simply roll and you get a lot of historical difference between unit types without any trouble. It's an excellent series of games that manage to show a lot of detail with no rules at all. Yeah, and I do agree that the custom dice is actually a brilliant mechanic. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a great game. But what for me makes it even better is the potential that it has, uh, because there are future games in the series that yes. are planned for. Because the Birth of Europe series just started with Vikings, that personally I don't really like. To be totally <laughs> fair, I like the uh, the Birth of America series. I think all of them have something different to offer, and it's quite fun. The Viking one I thought was a bit, I like the theme, but I thought it was a bit boring, but I like the potential of what it's going to be in the future. Yes. Do you want to say anything about the future games that are upcoming? I, I could yes. do that, yes. Uh, I'm working on a game on the 30 years war in the series that will be uh, featuring a lot of different sub elements from other games in the series and a completely new religious war element. Uh, so there is even more depth without any extra rules. Uh -huh. and, uh, Without too much extra too rules. Too much extra yeah. rules, yes. Because, <laughs> I, I, yeah, and, and I think it's really cool because you actually expanded on the system, but you did added a, 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 a thin, a thin, but it's here layer of complexity. Yes, that but adds in a terms lot of, of rules, it's very simple. Yes. In terms of very complexity simple. in play, it's yes. more complex. Very, yeah, yeah, clearly yeah. more complex, but I would argue more fun. Yes, but and I, I won't argue with that. Yes, okay. <laughs> That's good. So that was your second entry? Yes. Uh, my second entry is going to be a bit more, uh, I would say, conservative. Yes. Uh, and I, I think I'm probably the, the orthodox uh, of this uh, of this duo here. Definitely. My second entry would be um, Area Impulse Games in general, but I will pick one in particular, Storm Over Stalingrad by MMP. Uh, and all the Storm Over series, actually. Uh, Storm Over Arnhem, uh, Storm Over... Oh, actually, I haven't tried the Fu. I think it's not that good. But I know that Stalingrad is really good. Uh, and I think that it's a good game to introduce people to area impulse games. Um, that was probably more popular in the 90s with Breakout Normandy yes. and games like this. But I'm mentioning it because it's a big category of wargaming that you cannot not know, even if it's a bit old school. <laughs> but I think it has a yes. lot of really good and interesting mechanics. You could probably modernize area impulse. It had a lot of clever bits. Uh, and it created a lot of classical and really interesting war games. And why I'm mentioning it also, it's because a company called Revolution Games that is uh, publishing a lot of uh, Ziploc games uh, recently and a lot of good games, uh, I, would, uh, I would argue, has taken this system and applied it to a lot of different uh, theaters of operation. And there is one specifically that I really like, that is uh, Siege of Oregon uh, on the um, Soviet war in Afghanistan, that is really a really really cool uh, area impulse, impulse game and I think it has this potential to illustrate in an easy manner and in a fun way uh, how uh, like a, a lot of different kind of battles at a lot of different times and the system is quite simple you've got different areas around the map uh, and it has impulse system so you actually activate a core of units and you can make them different actions they can move they can fight and then when they did their action they are flipped to their spend side so you have to 
manage your efforts so not push too much too too fast because then your opponent can react so you really have this feel of tension of the battle most of them you don't really know when the turn is going to end there is a lot of tension it's a very interesting um, system i know it's not as sexy as cdgs or other games tactical games that you might mention in the future uh, of this <laughs> video but i think area impulse have something great to offer a lot of great games are being released with that system today. And I believe that a lot of great games are going to be released in the future on that system. Storm of our Selling Ground is a very good example of this. Very popular battle. Very good system. Nice game. Uh, the only thing is that I'm not sure that it's easy to find. Probably not new because I think it's out of print. On BGG, you can find it for not that expensive on the second-hand market. And it's definitely a great game. But you don't agree. I think uh, they were great games. They work. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I'm not as orthodox as you are. I'm a bit of more of a newborn yes. gamer. You're liberal. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So that was my uh, my second entry. My uh, third entry is uh, my uh, personal favorite of all time: the Conflict of Heroes uh, system from Academy Games. Um, and I think no war game collection should uh, be without a, a hex and counter game. And uh, why not start with the best? So, <laughs> Conflict of Heroes it is. Uh, and Conflict of Heroes uh, depict uh, tactical combat in uh, World War II. And uh, that's a, a huge topic in wargaming and has been done over and over again. Mostly by very complex uh, games with uh, 50 plus page rulebooks and lots of reference tables and a ton of information markers on top of your units. And uh, I've played a lot of those games back in the days and uh, Conflict of Heroes does things uh, very differently and after trying it once I decided to uh, sell the rest of my complex uh, war games and have never regretted it. It looks stunning and it's uh, easy to play despite the fact that the counters look a bit busy because there are a lot of numbers. Uh, the rule book and scenario book is arranged in a programmed learning fashion where you can learn uh, the game in steps. The cool thing about the game is uh, Beside the fact that there are no information markers at all, uh, is that it's you play where you do a single action like moving one hex or firing with one unit, and then the other one, uh, the other player does something. So that it gives it a uh, super intense and dramatic, almost a real time feel. And a lot of the detail included in the old school uh, games on the same topic have been uh, abstracted into the game. So when I play, I find that I have 90% of the detail and realism of the old games yeah. uh, baked into the design, but with only 10% of the rules weight. Mm, yeah. And that's awesome. Uh, so you can actually play and have fun instead of just looking up stuff in a rulebook. And, and that enhances the... Uh, the real-time play because a tactical game where each turn represents one minute doesn't make sense when you spend 30 minutes looking <laughs> up the rule books. Um, and I've played it with my son since he was uh, eight years old and he loves it. And I've played it with uh, experienced war gamers with a ton of historical background on the topic and they love it. And I know that uh, Marine Corps officers use it for training. Mm. And they love it. So I think that, think that says a lot about the game. Yeah, the fact that you have such a wide range of yeah. audiences that actually like the game. And I really love the system. Yeah. Uh, I have played it uh, more than 150 times. Yeah. And I love it more now than I did the first time. And, and the diversity of the scenarios makes it possible. You have a lot of boxes in different setups. Yeah. Uh, you've got East Front, you've got Guadalcanal, uh, and even for the East Front, you've got different, uh, different There are areas. some scenarios I have played more than 20 times. More than 20 times. And I'm still not done with them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I do agree that they look stunning. Um, and I was wondering, how do, you, how do you think they compare to other tactical systems? Because I know that you had for a while a few boxes of Band of Brothers yes. that we played together. That was really good. But I would say personally, I found l less fun, but maybe, yeah. but maybe better mechanically. But Band just of Brothers not a, yeah. was a better simulation in some ways, but a worse game in yes. others. And I think Conflict of Heroes gives me the the best balance of playability and realism. And I think that the real time play yeah. uh, makes it a, a overall a better simulation as well, because you have to really think fast and do one thing and then the other one does one thing and that can screw off your plan so you have to adapt 
constantly and that's awesome and that's also a reason why i like something that you're hinting to and the reason why i didn't put it in my list is that for me that's a great game to have in your collection but i would say in the new version yes not the current no. one and the new version is to my knowledge not yet available and we don't have <laughs> a date of release yet and i think that the <laughs> old version is great but i wouldn't say foundational i would say that the new rule system yes. is awesome definitely awesome but we've been waiting for it for i don't know how long and for me it's hard to recommend this yes. because i have no guarantee that even if i know uh, the 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 box yes. are being shipped to the us and you can actually follow the 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 <laughs> boat uh, going across the pacific we have n no confirmation that the game is going to be released anytime soon but and the rules are out yes, so you can play true. with the new system and you have to change the dice yes but so you could get the rules change the dice and it's the only component you have yes. to change yeah okay so that's fair enough yeah but still i've been using the new rules for my last 30 games or so yes and it makes an awesome thing even even better. more awesome yeah but just crappy dice but i'm a fanboy so yes yeah no but, but i admit <laughs> it's a good system i'm just saying the best version of the game is not out yet so i have True. A, i had a bit of a a problem putting it on the list because I think if the game is not out, I wouldn't consider it like an actual game that you I could put on the list. True, but the previous version is awesome. Yes, so. yeah, it's true, but not as awesome. No, no, <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, okay. So that was your third entry, and yes. for my third entry, I'm gonna do something even more radical. And yes. I think you won't agree. And I think a lot of people watching this video that knows a bit of what war game are not gonna agree either. But for me. It makes a lot of sense, and I'm and I'm ready to take that fight. My third entry has a good uh, or a key foundational game to have when you start your war game collection. Super excited! Yes, it's Pass <laughs> Pass of Glory. Yes. 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 Uh, you could yeah. do that. <laughs> Definitely not an entry level <laughs> war game. Uh, I know. Uh, I know it's not. Uh, I'm not uh, crazy, but I do think uh, that it's a game that you can learn as a beginner. It is manageable. You probably need to have another wargamer with you to actually yeah. walk you through it. And why I think it's a great uh, game to start your collection with or have this game as one of your games to start your collection is that this game was foundational for a lot of games that was created yes. afterwards and that had an influence that is massive on modern wargame design. Yes. And it's still one of the best of its kind. Yes. So it generated a completely new branch uh, of war games. Uh, maybe not by itself. You also had uh, Hannibal and Amilcar and uh, I don't yeah. know the... Uh, I don't with the people. Yeah, or with the people and all this. It, it, it is important in the history of war games. It is still uh, like one of the best war games I've ever played. And I actually played it quite late. So it's weird to say this because I actually played a lot of war games before playing this one and it yes. entered my collection very late. But when I played it and when I finally had the new deluxe version, I was like, I should have played this way <laughs> earlier. It's, and it was it was such an awesome experience. I was so obsessed by it when I started playing it. You gave me the, what's this magazine? The Not the playbook? The player guide. Yeah, the player guide. And I actually, I read it at night. I was like, <laughs> like, like a teenager. I was crazy about it. I think it was so interesting thinking about the opening moves, thinking about mistakes that I made in previous games. And everything that it learns you, it learns you how to play a CDG. Car-driven games are, are a great mechanic for, for strategical level uh, wargaming. I think it's something, it's something that brilliant that was created uh, uh, more than two decades ago and still relevant today. And this game tells you everything you need to know about it. It's the, the, the best of its kind, I would argue. Yes. Having this in your uh, collection, it's a game that you're going to play now in five years in 10 years that you're going to continue playing that you're going to um, also like probably more and more over time maybe at some time you will be tired of it stop playing it and then three years later i guess you can come back to it i think that's what happened to yes. you uh, and uh, and it opens you to a lot of a lot of games that are not necessarily exactly clones of that system uh, and for example when we started playing the fog of war series yes. i realized afterwards how so many concepts was were borrowed in the Fog of War series yes. to uh, Pass of Glory, and I was thinking if I had played Pass of Glory, there is probably a lot of mistakes that I made during my first games of the Fog of War <laughs> series, especially supply lines, <laughs> <laughs> which is the the most common error that you can make as a beginner that I would have not made or that I would have seen better, that I would have better understood the influence that it has is so major and it's still it's not like it's an influential game that didn't age well it's an influence it's an influential game that 
aged like a really good wine. Like the, yes. the new map is awesome. The historical setup is really great. I think the only drawback is it's long playtime. Yeah. But I think it's, it's, I agree, it's such an influential design uh, that everybody should have it on their shelf, even if they don't play it. It's <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I normally don't feel like that with games uh, because, yeah, games should be played, but it's, it's truly a classic. Yes. So you do agree. Yes. But, but it's a bit, yeah. It, but, but once but, again. But I wouldn't start my collection with it. It would be. It wouldn't be the first game. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying it's the first game. I just say it's one of it, the yeah. first five. Yeah. So it's. So yeah. Cool. And I, I will. Like we can edit and show back the beginning of the video. I did say specifically I wanted uh, games that were not necessarily entry level war games. So you, did, you did say that. I did say that. Yes. So let's go to uh, entry number four. <laughs> yes. Uh, final act from Taito Games. And uh, it's a weird uh, pick for me because uh, I just said that uh, chess type players shouldn't play war games, but if they do, they should play Final Act. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, another tactical game, but uh, very different from uh, Conflict of Heroes. Uh, whereas all other tactical games I know of uh, use dice to resolve combat, uh, this game has no random elements at all. It's a goldmine for chess players. It features uh, program movement, uh, so both players uh, simultaneously program how their tanks will move, and then they designate where their tanks will uh, fire at, and then they execute their moves, and you're hit if you end your move in an area hit by fire. And this is uh, super, super simple. Um, it's the easiest war game I know of. You can literally learn the rules in five minutes, and I have played it often with uh, none gamers not just non war mm. gamers but even non gamers and they they everybody learn the rules very quickly and it's super fun and engaging and it's a, also a good game for people who just hate dice yes then you can only blame yourself <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually a good point yes i have a problem with this one yes uh, because uh, in a lot of ways compared to the to the other games that we've talked about all of them are actually trying i have at least the ambition to simulate something historical yes to explain through a game uh, to give you uh, something about history yes and this teaches generic tank on tank combat okay and it's designed by an israeli tank officer mm. and they know about tanks yes <laughs> <laughs> and he um he thinks it's a it's a very realistic game on tank combat so you don't get the details about armor thickness or mm. different shell types or stuff it's just the but you have a few pure basics yeah but you have a feel of tank skirmish with yeah it. okay so that you get sense. basic tactics and basic uh, feel of the battlefield where you have to make a plan and uh, anticipate yeah. what the enemy does yeah and see it fail yes <laughs> which is i think one of the most important thing you it's the to. only game where i'm totally unable to beat my wife because yes. she can read me like an open book <laughs> and i have no idea what she does so. <laughs> but i uh, i've never played it and uh, now that you that you uh, you mentioned it a few times and yes. you showed it to me the components are actually quite awesome yes. uh yeah, cute, the wooden tanks yes uh, cute wooden <laughs> tanks and the the board is actually really cool and i, I yeah we should definitely uh definitely try yes. it how long is a is a game? Twenty five to forty five minutes. Okay, actually, we could do a playthrough of it, like yes. one game. That could be a. Okay, that it's could an be excellent fun. filler game. As okay, well. to be considered. Yes. Maybe this summer we'll do a, a playthrough session because I I want to try it now. Yes. Cool. <laughs> so that was entry number four for you, Brian, and my entry number four is even more orthodox. <laughs> so it's <laughs> so it's not modern at all. Uh, it's super old school, and on for this entry, I was conflicted between two games. Um, one series that I decided not to pick in the end. Uh, it was the any entry, not any entry, but one of the good ones of the uh, standard combat series entry by MMP again, uh, because I wanted to have a classical hex encounter yes. game. I think you need to have a classical hex encounter game. Conflict groups. Yeah, but it's not the same. It's not operational. True. And and and, and I'll give you that. yes. And for me, there is this thing about uh, standard combat series that that 
that is like that has this classical feel of in eight pages of rule it, it's applied to a lot of different scenarios and then you just have to learn just a few pages of special rules for special uh, special events uh, but you have all the all the core mechanics of hex encounters yes. but then because we we're recording this uh, video the 14th of july yes i decided to have to show a bit of um, uh, patriotism yes. and then i changed my number four <laughs> and i didn't pick standard converse series i picked another classic hex encounter game that i think is one of of the greatest war game that was ever released. Liberty Rose? N uh, no. No? Yes, yes. Oh, I thought you were uh, talking about Victory Rose. But yeah, Li Liberty Rose. Yes. yes. Uh, Liberty Rose by, uh, by Exasim. Uh, in a lot of ways, a very classic hex encounter with some tweaks. Uh, the combat result table is a bit different. Uh, yes. It has a bit more depth. Uh, there are no zones of control. You can actually move around them, which makes sense at this scale. When you play the game, it makes sense. And why did I pick this game? I picked it for a few reasons. First of all, it's really awesome. Uh, it, it, is. It, it is a really great hex encounter game. Uh, there is this asset mechanic that is... <clears throat> Makes me reminds me a bit of uh, fast action battles uh, in a, in a way where you also have to manage the assets, not only the units on the board, yes. which is super interesting. It's a beautiful game. It's on the uh, the liberation of France, so the topic is uh, also uh, quite cool. Yes. The components are great, so it's it's an, it's a very good game. It introduces you to a lot of hex encounter concepts, and I think for a hex encounter game, it's probably one of the best uh, that exists. To to my uh, act, at least. For me, it's one of the best that I know of. And why I think it's a good game to start with in your game collection. Um, and it's because there are two levels in the box. Uh, you can play Operation Cobra. And Operation Cobra is only 10 pages of rules. It's totally manageable for a beginner. Yes. And you can get introduced to a lot of concepts, have a lot of fun. Operation Cobra is a scenario that you can play dozens of times and still have fun with it. And once you've been accustomed to Operation Cobra, you can actually expand and play a full campaign. And then the full campaign, you have a, like a crazy experience. That is, you're going to play an actual war game like... A lot of people were playing it in the 90s, which is actually playing a night overnight. You're going to have to need maybe 5 to 10 sitting to finish a campaign. <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun and you're going to understand a lot of things about uh, this campaign, why certain cities were so important. And and you will, like when you make the decision, uh, when you play the full campaign and make the decision to, uh, to invade Normandy and not Brittany or not uh, the north of France, you actually understand why this decision was made and it makes sense while you play the game and I think it conveys a lot of uh, great historical insights. It's super fun to play. It's an awesome game. Uh, it's still in print, I'm pretty sure, and it's in English or French, so it's available for yes. everyone. Uh, and it's, I think it's just a, just an amazing game. Yes. You agree? Yes, it is. Good. But, but it's, yeah, it's on the, yeah, it's a long, long game to play. It's a long game to play. But if you have the time, yes. yes. It's on the time to spend and then on a long and but, fun game. But I think you need a Hex Encounter game. Or maybe you need to try one. Yeah, I think you need to try one. Yes, maybe you don't need them in your collection, I don't know. But then... I think if you're orthodox, you definitely need them. Yes. Because yes. that's how we used to do things yes. back in the days. No, but at least a few of them, <laughs> because there is a lot of interesting concepts in a, in a lot of them that you could find in other games. True. It's just that they are maybe less fun. I don't know. I think they are... They have a lot of the small counters and the small hexes and the large stacks might scare off some people. Yeah, maybe. But then again, what you learn playing hex encounters, I see a lot of uh, uh, new school uh, block war games that actually use hex encounter mechanics. Yes. If I think about the whole fast series, for example, yes. by Worthington, it's block games, but actually all the core concepts are hex encounter games. It's just yes. that they added this layer of fog of war with uh, with blocks, but it could definitely be counters. It, it wouldn't. And and all the concepts are the same. Yeah. It's just that they don't really have combat result tables. You just throw more dice, but it's yeah. exactly the same thing. I don't know. And playing SCS solo is a lot of fun if you're interested in the scenario. And I think that uh, some of the games are some of. Some hex encounter games, even modern ones, are actually quite awesome. I'm thinking about the ones released by Kim Kanger. Yes. Uh, and I think he, he's releasing some, some really cool games. Not playing those games because they are old school is, is probably, you're probably missing out, I would say. I think, I, I agree, you should definitely try them. Yeah. Because they're not for everybody, but if they're for you, they're awesome. Yeah. Okay. And I used to play a lot of them, so I, it's not like I don't like them. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> But it, it, it is, yeah. yeah. Okay. But uh, so that was entry number four, Liberty Roads. Yes. 
And my last entry is uh, in Command and Colors um, from GMT Games and others. As Fred uh, mentioned earlier, I won't go into total depth, but it's a system of games uh, that's it's like they're an institution in the war game world. Mm. So I think you should own one of them and just pick the one with the topic that appeals to you the most because they're all good games, just different. And uh, as you said, they resolve around playing a card from your hand yeah. and then activating a limited number of units based on that card. And that gives you, um, in a very abstract way, uh, but elegantly shows you the uh, problems of exercising effective command over an army uh, during a battle. And um, it limits your options and forces you to plan ahead and be flexible. And that's uh, what I'm looking for in a game. Mm. And uh, they might not be the most realistic war games in terms of uh, the small details, but uh, they do paint a good looking and a very thematic impressionistic painting of a battle. Uh, and they are an absolute joy to play. Yeah. Um, I will say though that uh, Command and Colors is the most complicated game on my list, uh, but it's not really that complicated. It's just that the rulebook says things in a very convoluted manner and they, it repeats itself a lot. You would say that it's more complicated than uh, than Conflict of Heroes? Yes. Oh. I would. Okay. And especially when you try to read the rulebook. But I think it's because the rulebook is written for non non war gamers. Mm. So they explain a lot of things and repeat it. And I realized that for for Command and Color Ancients when we played it, I never read the rules. I already knew the system. I yeah. came in, you told me what was the specificities of Yes, you that. can go from game to game yeah. within the series with uh, a minute or two of yeah I, it took me not a minute it took me a whole game i, I need to be destroyed during a game true and then i understood it took how you it, a, worked. it took you a minute to learn it and then it <laughs> took you a game to really understand, really understand what you yes. try what that you were trying to mean yes. like hold the line was yes. actually really important <laughs> it was yeah it was painful but fun and i agree in you're saying something that i think is very true like the fact that you have to do with what you have for yes. a lot of gamers they're saying oh it's a frustration i want to move my left flank and i cannot and i don't know why i couldn't yes. but I, i like the fact that this is what you have and you have to do what's what you what's best with yes. and you just have to figure it out and yeah. i think it creates a lot of interesting situations so that was entry number five last yes. entry and my last entry is your first entry so awesome. it's the colombia abc system i don't know what's the name of the system but I, i think it's called the abc system. the abc system the one that i really like in the series is uh, crusader rex because it's the one that i played the most uh, it's a bit more actually significantly more complex than julius caesar you have uh, the siege rules that uh, adds a, another layer to combat but that is super fun it provides a lot of historical flavor you learn a lot about the era and the uh, and the events you understand a lot about the strategies and why certain cities were important yes. the kind of move that you need to do uh, the siege dynamic is is, is really cool uh, and i really like julius caesar too it's just that i think crusader rex has this additional layer and i think i like also games in the middle east uh, yes. overall for me i have i'm more attracted to this oh actually Julius Caesar has also has the yeah a quarter of its map <laughs> in the Middle East so that's yeah so yeah so I like it still but not, <laughs> not as much like the eastern half of the game yeah yeah the eastern part of the game is actually quite cool it's a great uh, introductionary level war game but it's also a very like a very large system there is a lot of games in this yes. there is uh, Richard 3 there is uh, Hammer of the Scots You could say that Pacific Victory, no? Yes, it's... A, it's an iteration yeah, of it. It's yes. not exactly it, but it's an iteration yeah. of it. And, that and game, they have the Victory series, which is generic World War II yeah. era. And the one in the Pacific was actually quite fun. Yes, uh, super, super. Yeah, super. And now that I'm mentioning it, I would like to play it again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's another discussion that we'll take uh, after the video. Uh, but yeah, so definitely Columbia Block Games, a great system. Uh, a lot of different uh, events have been covered with it. An elegant system, I would say, not that hard. Super interesting, super fun. I like the point-to-point -point maps, but it also applied to some uh, either areas or hex encounters or yes. hexagons. I mean, and it's uh, it's actually quite cool, a really cool game. So that was my fifth and final entry. Yes, and I guess you should agree because it was also in your list. Yes. So this one, you I shouldn't. Definitely yes. agree. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, so that's cool. Uh, now that we've shared our top five, if you want to 
like comment on it or actually suggest your own top five. Yes. A good place to do this would be either in the comment section, but I'm also gonna open a thread on Board Game Geek. Uh, the link is gonna be in the description where actually I would like to continue the conversation and uh, and discuss what you think should be the five first uh, war games yes. to uh, build your, your collection. Tell us what we missed. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and we actually don't have to ask, I guess that people would naturally want I think to feel compelled. Gamers do, do yes, that. to very service-minded. Yes, very service, <laughs> indeed. Uh, but anyway, so there will be a thread on VGG. Feel free to comment in the comment section and follow the discussions over there. I think it's going to be super fun. Keep it nice, uh, obviously, but that's, that, is, that should be the case. Uh, yes. War gamers or gentlemen. Yes. Most of them. <laughs> um, and there is one series that we just mentioned in this video, but was in none of our list. And I think could have an honorable mention that is uh, the whole fast series by yes. Worthington game and the reason I liked it I like it more than you do I think yes you definitely like uh, it I def <laughs> <laughs> the problem that I have with whole fast series and I think it's a tough thing to say but I really believe it is that for every game in the series there is a better option yes and that's the main problem I have with it it's like if I think about uh, all fast um, eastern front I would definitely play uh, No Retreat. Yes. Uh, if I think about North Africa, I would definitely uh, uh, play Rommel in the Desert. Yes. Uh, and I think the only one would be the Korean one. Yes. But if the fog I'm of working on yes, it. And, but if the fog of war uh, uh, game, when the whale fights uh, is released in yes. the future, I would never feel uh, the necessity to play the whole fast Korea because another game is better and yes. not necessarily a lot more complex. But still an amazing series, uh, really cool. And once but it I think the main drawback to me is also that they are designed graphically to appeal to retro style oh. orthodox gamers. Maybe that's why I like them. Yeah, yeah. Because but if if a non-war gamer sees them, they will run screaming away <laughs> because they look horrible. And, and it's designed like present day, but it looks like something out of the seventies. Okay, maybe, but I actually yeah. quite like them. But uh, but yeah, I, I can I can get the feeling. Anyway, just uh, for finishing this uh, video, uh, I would like to thank um, first uh, the YouTube channel Bonding with uh, Board Games because of their Hamtak series. And to be totally honest, it inspired me to make that video. Like I've watched all of them, yeah. I've enjoyed all of them. I'm actually quite sad that they don't do any more Hamtag. Uh, even if I know they've talked about all the games already, it's just <laughs> that it, it's so nice to watch. Uh, so I just wanted to thank uh, Bart, Judd, and uh, Greg. And my second one is I want to thank uh, Max uh, Steinmetz, uh, who is the person who did the uh, introduction for that uh, channel. So the intro that you have at the beginning that I started using in the previous video, who's a professional editor and uh, one of my closest friends that actually helped me out by making this uh, introduction. So thank you, Max. That's awesome. Uh, and then uh, I would like to thank you, Brian, for joining <laughs> me. I hope that you'll join again for other uh, videos. I think that would be great. Yes, clearly. Um, either for top fives or maybe uh, for some playthroughs. Yes. And I think I would like to do, and maybe let me know in the comments if you're interested, but uh, design diaries uh, where we could actually talk about uh, some of the games that you're designing and talk about uh, like the, the process of designing games I yes. think would be quite interesting be so uh, this concludes the video about starting your wargaming collection yes. thank you for watching this was Homo de Dance see you next time and if you want to support this channel like <laughs> share subscribe please uh, any help is welcome that would be awesome and see you bye bye <laughs>